Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a hurricane outlook and discussion recorded on June 23rd, 2022, chronal 11 a.m. Eastern Time. In today's video, we're talking about Tropical Storm Sydney that has formed in the Atlantic Main Development Region. Is it going to turn into a hurricane? We're going to talk about that and Tropical Storm Brett today that has impacted the island. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that it is quite busy out there. We have a couple of systems to monitor today. Uh, first of all, I'll go ahead and stop the loop. This is Tropical Storm Brett, the remnants of Brett now moving through into the Caribbean after bringing some heavy rainfall and strong winds to portions of the island chain. And then we also have newly designated Tropical Storm Sydney, which we'll talk about. And then we have a few more tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. Not yet designated by anything from the National Hurricane Center, but it is just something to monitor as we progress over the next several days. Taking a look here at Tropical Storm Brett this morning, it is not doing so well. We notice here in the visible satellite imagery that most of the convection has been shot off towards the north here and north and east of the the center of circulation, which is roughly in about here in the last frame. We go ahead and stop that. You can see where the center of circulation actually is. We'll get and zoom in. The center of circulation is right about here where my cursor is. And you notice most of the deeper convection is off towards the north and east at this point. And that is a result of strong upper level winds digging in and choking this storm off. We can see here that the center becomes exposed. And as it does so, we're going to start to lose westerly winds here on the southern side, meaning that this system is likely now beginning to open up into a tropical wave. And as it does so, of course, we're going to start to lose that circulation and advisories will be discontinued after a certain point in time. So this still brings some heavy rainfall to portions of the island chain, which is located roughly about here. So this is still bringing some heavier weather, some heavy winds uh, from time to time, and also just some rainfall and cloudy conditions. But overall, the worst of the weather is now pooling away and should not impact land anymore during the next several days. So again, the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center still has winds of 60 miles per hour near the core of Tropical Storm Brett. However, this is likely diminishing in quick order. This will continue scooting off towards the west at about 20 to 25 miles per hour and eventually weaken here sometime on Saturday into Sunday as a remnant low. So again, this is now continuing to move off here towards the west. This will bring some impacts towards portions of Central America over the next couple of days, mainly in the form of heavy wind, or not heavy wind, but heavy rainfall, with the potential for some gusty winds from time to time as well, places like Nicaragua, Honduras, etc. These places could get in on some of the heavier rain showers. This could cause some mudslides and flooding problems in some areas. But otherwise, the storm is on its last leg. And no, the storm will not end up in the Gulf. I've seen a few you know, tweets about that this morning. The storm is not ending up in the Gulf of Mexico one bit. So this is on its last leg out. And we won't really have to monitor this after the next day or so. Taking a look here at Tropical Storm Sydney this morning. The storm's organization has certainly improved within the last 24 hours. And today we notice a deep convective burst that is fairly near to the low level circulation, which is right about here. However, what we do notice is that there is not a lot of convective activity on the eastern side of the circulation. And this is actually dry air that is getting ingested into the storm's core. And there's still a little bit of shear, primarily from a tropical upper tropospheric trough near the Caribbean that is going to start to push the convection off towards the north and east, very similar to what's happening with Tropical Storm Brett right now. But the storm's organization has definitely improved and we'll have to watch how this changes throughout the day. Right now it's kind of on that downtrend, uh, but if the convective activity can pick up, this thing definitely could intensify to near hurricane intensity. So looking here at the official track forecast from the National Hurricane Center, Sydney right now has sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,003, moving west-northwest at 14 miles per hour. The storm is expected to continue on this west-northwesterly trajectory throughout the remainder of its storm's lifetime for the most part. 
and is expected to degenerate into an open tropical wave here or post-tropical cyclone in the next 120 hours or five days from now, Wednesday morning. But this still has room to intensify over about the next 24 to 36 hours before wind shear really starts to begin to take a toll. And on its current trajectory, the storm is expected to miss the northern part of the Leeward Islands and continue moving just to the south of Bermuda, which is right here, and is expected right now to kind of stay between Bermuda, the Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas within about the next five days. So at least for right now, it does not seem like this is going to be a threat for the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, or the southeastern United States. If we take a look here at the upper level environment as depicted by the H4 model, this is the hurricane specific model. We're looking at the 200 millibar wind pattern that we've been talking about over the past couple of days. And we notice very right off the bat, we've got this large trough moving into the Caribbean. And this is what's responsible mostly right now for shearing tropical storm Brett at the moment. But this is also going to create shear over top of Tropical Storm Sydney as the storm generally moves off towards the west-northwest, something like that. So you can see here in the forecast model, the storm does intensify slightly during the next 24 hours or so. But as the storm begins to get tugged more towards the north and west here, we notice that there's just a belt of westerly winds here, meaning that this is going to encounter a very unfavorable environment to really hold together. And within several days from now, the H Wharf model actually has the storm moving into a belt of roughly about 20 to 25, even 30 knots of shear out across this area. This will be very detrimental for the storm as it tilts the vortex over and spreads that latent heat release into a much larger area instead of being concentrated. And so the heat engine <clears throat> of a tropical cyclone is not able to get well established. And so the storm actually just kind of becomes a remnant low by that time. Now, looking out into the future of this storm, within about five days, the upper level environment is going to begin to change. Although there's still a fairly significant belt of westerly winds here, there's a trough approaching from the north. And this trough here is going to allow ventilation of a cyclone if it is optimized optimally placed within the jet environment to allow the storm to intensify and what that basically means is that if the upper level poleward outflow here is allowing for a storm in the upper levels to be ventilated you've got that convergence at the surface that can actually help to regenerate a tropical system but it remains to be seen what exactly is there if we look at the relative humidity though there's really not a lot of semblance of a tropical cyclone. In fact, you can see where the cyclone might be somewhere within this area as denoted by the turning of the winds here. So this is telling me that the storm is going to be fairly disheveled in several days. And in fact, it might be somewhere within here where we have a storm within about five to six days. And if this is the case, the atmosphere is not going to be primed for a storm to intensify as it goes a multitude of different directions, really, which we're going to talk about right now. So most of the model guidance today has shifted away from turning the storm towards the northeast, away from Bermuda, and keeps it generally on this west-northwesterly trajectory for several days. This is the Turks and Caicos, and this is the Bahamas, and that is the outer banks of North Carolina right here. And what we notice is that generally the storm's trajectory continues to head more westernly as a result of the storm being weaker than something like the GFS indicates where it has a strengthening hurricane that turns away from Bermuda. The track density forecast continues to suggest something to the similar effect where the storm actually continues to head west-northwest and then actually turns off towards the north at some point in time. And this could actually end up affecting Nova Scotia or the northeastern United States over the next couple of days as something. I wouldn't call this a tropical cyclone, but we're going to take a look at what might actually be occurring here over the next several days. 
So this is the European solution here. We're looking at the ECMWF European Zero Z Run, and we're looking at the relative humidity in the atmosphere. This is Tropical Storm Sydney located right here. We notice over the next couple days, just watch the moisture plume associated with Sydney within about five to six days. What actually happens is a trough of low pressure, the same trough that is going to be responsible for the ultimate really kind of steering flow of the storm is going to carry this moisture and surge it northward combined with an already approaching upper level storm system. And so what this is going to do is drive a fairly significant moisture fetch and tropical moisture at that northward. And this could actually get as far north as places like Nova Scotia, the Northeastern United States, you know, Cape Cod, Maine, places like that. We could be talking about a fetch of deep tropical moisture and this is sometime late next week. We're talking about early Friday next week about the potential for tropical moisture and tropical rainfall to be moving through this area combined with an upper level storm system. And that could definitely get you a little bit of a flooding risk for that area. So we'll be watching this very carefully. Again, the upper level environment isn't expected to be too favorable throughout the next several days. And in fact, we could just take a look at another look at that and look at the upper level environment. Now, in this depiction here, this is the HVAS. This is actually what's going to be replacing the HWARF and HMON. But the upper level environment is a little bit better here with the trough position just a bit further towards the north and a little bit of an anticyclonic flow as a result of an upper level high that is positioned right here that is helping to just kind of crank out a little bit of upper level uh, anticyclonic flow but generally westerly winds here so this is going to be one of the things that we're going to watch the storm in itself may completely degenerate into an open trough of low pressure within about the next five days and so this won't wouldn't be a tropical cyclone and that's currently is what is predicted from the national hurricane center but I suspect even beyond that, we're not going to be done watching this system, at least in terms of the rainfall that it might generate for the northeastern United States and the Canadian Maritimes as well. It is also worth noting that in the eastern Pacific Basin, we have a storm system that is likely to go on to be a tropical cyclone over the next seven days. We've got an area of lower pressure right now consolidating generally in and around this X that's kind of marked here where my cursor is. And this is expected to move northward and then drift off towards the west over the next coming days. And this could be an impetus for additional tropical cyclone formation further off towards the east as well. So things are picking up again in both basins. It looks like after tropical storm Sydney in the Atlantic Basin, things will generally be relatively quiet but we're going to have to monitor the Eastern Pacific for additional development over the next week or so. So again, it is quite busy out there across the tropical Atlantic and in the Eastern Pacific. We'll be watching a few systems out there. Otherwise, though, we'll be watching a few additional tropical waves that will be coming off the coast of Africa during the next couple of days to about the next week or so. No imminent threat for development, but we'll have to watch this as we are starting to get to that time of year. All right. So that being said, of course, I am Michael Romali. There will be no evening video discussion as Tropical Storm Brett is now moving well away from land at this point and will continue to monitor Tropical Storm Sydney and what might happen with that. All right. God bless everyone. Take care. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.